بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Dear viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has blessed us with this opportunity to discuss the holy verses of Quran and the narrations of Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as-salam and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his mercy to continue his blessing upon us in order for us to learn more from these verses of Quran and the narrations of Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as-salam and to be able to apply them into our daily lives. As we promised, we inshallah will uh, answer a very important question uh, which we, we have we, we, we've got to Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ This is the verse that we are discussing inshallah who believe in the unseen and maintain the prayer and spend out of what we have provided for them. If you have followed us within the previous episode we discussed about the uh, very important question that I've been asked many times, how can we concentrate within our prayer, that our mind, how can we control our mind for us to be able to understand what we are reciting and to be able to gain more and more and more from this opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for us on a daily basis five times to communicate with Him. So let's just think about this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Creator, of the whole universe, all the universes. He has allowed us on a daily basis five times to communicate with Him, ask Him and beg Him and ask, ask Him the importance dua that we have within Salah. So the question again is, how can we concentrate within our prayers? I'll give you inshallah three action plans, uh, which inshallah will help. It's been a study based on something else, but we can take it and apply it to our prayers also. In Japan, they did a study and they wanted to see how can they increase the grade of the students. They wanted their students uh, to get better grades at testing and they want their testing result to be better and higher. So they brought two groups of students. The first test that they did, it was that the first group, they had a set place where they would pray, where they would take the test. They would come every day and they will examine, be examined in the same place. The second group, every day they took them to different state, different place. One day here, the other day there, the other day there. And they find out that the first group, which they were tested in the same, at the same place every time, they had better result. Why? Because their mind started as soon as they came to the testing center their mind and physically and mentally they were ready for the test so they knew they were programmed to be tested in this, this place but the other group their mind was not ready and the, the mind didn't know in this place what i need to do how I, how i need to function so what do we learn within our house if we have one sp one room let us dedicate an extra room, let us dedicate that room, have a prayer mat, have maybe a banner of Ahl, about the names of Ahl Bayt alayhum salam, verses of the Holy Quran on the wall. Make it small masjid in your house in, and always pray in that room. So slowly, slowly you see that as soon as you come to that room, your mind is ready for prayer because it has been given a routine and that routine, mind likes to have a routine. That's kind of likes to always do the same thing again and again and again, the same place at the same time. The second test that they did, they, the first group, they were tested in a place that everything was organized. Few objects and every object was its own place. The second group, they were examined in different rooms and in, that room, in those rooms there were many, many objects, many materials, many... Uh, sofas, frame, books, shelf, you name it, and none of them were organized. Everything was on top of one another. And again, you can see it is very obvious that the first group where they were in the room that everything was organized and few uh, objects were there, they got better grading and better results. So same thing for us. We can do that to the room that we are praying. 
most of the time that we pray in the house or place that we mostly pray, let us have organized, let it be organized, maybe a good bukhur or something. So when we come there physically and mentally, we are ready for salah. So that's the second uh, uh, step that we can take to increase our concentration in our prayer. And the third thing, the third test that they did, it was the first group, they brought them to the testing center 10 to 15 minutes before the test. They had them come, they sat, 10, 15 minutes later, they gave them the test. Second group, as soon as they came, they gave them the test. Again, it was obvious that the first group, they were getting better results and they were getting better uh, grades. Why? Because when they came, they waited for the test. Mentally, they were ready for it. Rather than being rushing, suddenly coming, not knowing what is happening, give them the test. Okay, the mind change, switching from one scenario, from one mood, from one perspective, from one environment to another environment and going under stress of test, it didn't function that way. It didn't function easily going through that transferring. So, for us, and that's what we have in a hadith of Ahl al-Bayt where the Amir al the commander of the faithful, states that the right of the prayer upon you is to sit on the prayer mat before the time of Adhan, waiting for the Adhan to be set. That's an action plan. It's a very important action plan. At least those days that we are home, we are not working, during the day that we, are, we have break, or even if we can manage at work, or if we are at school, if we can manage that, okay, we let our co-workers, we let our manager, we let our classes, we, uh, we, I remember when I was in George Mason University, I tried my best, sometimes I was successful, sometimes I wasn't, that I would get my classes and somehow that between two classes would be the time of prayer. So when I leave one class, I have time to go to the prayer hall, pray, and then go to the other uh, class. I tried my best. So if by yuqimun as salah means what? That again, our schedule goes around salah. Not that we schedule everything suddenly in the middle of work, in the middle of studying, in the middle of cooking, middle of helping, middle of whatever it is, suddenly remember, oh my God, time to be, for my salah to be qada and I haven't prayed. No. That's the meaning of establishing salah. Al-ladina yuqimun as salah. That's the second sign of the pious individual. So the action plan will be from now on, let us schedule our day, let us schedule our week, let us schedule our meetings, let us schedule our gatherings, everything. Either we do something, then inshallah people, we will gather together two hours before salah. So we keep mentioning this. This becomes a culture that as a family, as a community, we start with our own family. We want to go to someone's house, we tell them inshallah, we will meet up after prayer. That's the timing. We pray and then we come. Or inshallah, we come and we pray at your place where we are raising kids with having the culture of knowing the importance of salah, that our time is salah time. And inshallah, all of our salah is on time. So that's how we raise our kids, inshallah. And inshallah, we'll talk about, actually let us discuss it right now also because it is very important. People have, uh, parents have complained that how can we, uh, teach our kids the importance of salah, it's not verbally saying it. it. It's always with our action, our kids and people, that's why it is very important for us to teach other people with our action, not verbally. This is the hadith, this is from the hadith of Ahl al-Bayt where Ahl al-Bayt have said, Kunu du'ata nas al -sinatikum. Invite people to, to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the religion of Islam, to the madhab of Ahl al-Bayt without your tongue means with your action. So at home, action plan, another action plan. Mother or the father, time of Adhan comes. For those days that they're home or for those prayers that everybody has home, typically Maghrib and Asha. Time of Maghrib and Asha time comes, stand in the middle of the house. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, say Adhan. That slowly, slowly raised a generation that they remember, okay, my, my dad used to say adhan within the house. That was the time of salah. We finish our food by salah or we eat food after salah. So again, our programming should be salah, 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 salah. And uh, within the house, we can pray salat al-jama'ah. The father leads the prayer 
inshallah, he can perfect his pronunciation. And the mother and the kids, they can pray Salat al-Jama'ah. It is, it is allowed and it is possible. It has thawab in it. So for the times, again, times that we are at home, Salat al-Subuh or Maghrib al-Asha or the week, on the weekends, we pray Salat al-Jama'ah. And again, that becomes slowly, slowly as a culture, which is very, very important. And we said that another action plan will be we sit on our prayer mat 10 to 15 minutes maximum. Don't make it more. Before Salah, we read a page or two of the Holy Quran. And if you have followed our lectures, you know our action plans from the previous that we read 50 verse a day and read the translation of those 50 verse and take one verse and think about it. That takes 10, 15 minutes and take one hadith from the kitab to have al uqul that we have introduced and read it, think about it, ponder about it and to see how can we bring this hadith and one verse into our lives and where we can see after one year 365 verses of the Holy Quran, how much it has changed us and it has enhanced our life and our relationship with other people and same thing, 365 narrations of Ahlul Bayt Let's get to the ahadith and their narrations of Ahlul Bayt about the importance of Salah because we want to be from those people who are pious. Why? Because we want Quran to be guidance for us. Imam Amir al muminin the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, states, and this is within the book, Ghurar al-Hakam, Wadarur al-Kalam, Durar al-Kalam, page number 175. Imam says, Beautiful hadith, amazing. What a beautiful, tangible, actionable item. That's the beauty of Madhab Ahl Bayt They teach us every little small detail. Imam says, if a person who's praying knows how much blessing he is receiving from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he is at, the, at sujood, lama rafa'a ra'sahu min as sujood. He wouldn't take his head out off of sujood. He would kept being at the condition of sujood. Where another hadith says, Imam says, when you are in the condition of sujood, when you are prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the same way that the leaves of the tree fall in the season of fall, the same way your sins will fall. So a very important action plan again. Salat al-Subh, when we wake up, which is very, very recommended for us to be awake from Salat al-Subh, Fajr time, until sunrise, take the tasbih, put your head on the turba, and a hundred times say, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. Start your day asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness after salah. And when you come at night time, you come home from all the, what you have seen outside, from the challenges, difficulties, God forbid we might have sinned, we might have lied, or our eyes have seen left and right, we might have heard left and right, here are the things that we're supposed not to hear, we say things that we're supposed not to say. Well, we come home after Maghrib and Asha, we put our head on sujood, and we go to sujood and we hold the tasbih of Karbala, inshallah, we have. And we say a hundred times, astaghfirullah wa atubu alayh. Do this for one week, one, two weeks, one month. See how much you will feel better, inshallah. Another hadith, this is in Kafi Sharif, Noble Kafi, uh, volume 3, page 270. Where Imam tells his son, Ya Bunay, innahu la yanalu shafa'atana man istakhaffa bis salah. God forbid, inshallah, we are not from these, those people who don't receive the intercession of Ahl al-Bayt on the Day of Judgment. Because we believe as the Shia, the Twelve Verse, we believe on the Day of Judgment, inshallah, that we must be doing good in this world as much as possible, trying to be good people. God forbid if we had sins here and there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this authority to Ahl al-Bayt to intercede for us, inshallah. But... Imam places a condition. He says, La yanalu shafa'atana, our intercession won't reach whom a person man salah, who thought of salat to be less value. Didn't give salah the value that salah had. Not, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not talking about the person who doesn't pray. No, that's kufr. 
if a person knows about salah and the importance of salah and purposely and intentionally he doesn't pray that's kufr no imam says man istakhaffa bi salah meaning i'm watching a show maybe i'm watching a football or soccer between two teams or a tv show or an episode whatever it is i'm between a game allahu akbar allahu akbar the time of salah comes i delay salah I go do something else, and I go do something else, and I go do something else. Five minutes before it becomes qada, I pray. That is called istighfaf bis salah, meaning lowering and lessening the value of salah in our eyes. Imam says, our shafa'ah, our intercession won't reach that. Or we are sitting within a gathering, family sitting together, time of Christmas comes, Thanksgiving, or we just got together on a weekly basis, inshallah. We as the lovers of Ahl Bayt we are recommended to get together, discuss our issues, our affairs, and try to be as one united community. We sit together, time of Salah comes, and we just keep talking and talking and talking, and we don't get up everybody as jama'ah for prayer. That is istighfaf bis salat, which inshallah, we hope we are not amongst those people. So inshallah, we receive the shafa'ah of Ahl Bayt the rest, inshallah, in the next episode, we will conclude by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most important dua which we have been prescribed by Ahl Bayt to increase the dua by Imam Zaman, which he said, pray abundantly and increase the amount of prayers that you pray, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten his reappearance. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma kun la waliyika al-hujjata min al-hasan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala awaih. Fi hadhihi sa'ata wa fi kulli sa'ah. وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين